Oh, Mr. Speaker. Yeah, you. It looks like, no matter what we the people say, you are determined to support treason and murder. Thousands upon thousands of Americans shout in your ear to appoint the select committee through which we can expose the truth of what happened in Benghazi, and still you do nothing. You are despicable, but not nearly as despicable, disgusting, and outright morally bankrupt as the 15 Democrats who walked out on the testimony of the family members of the fallen at Benghazi during the latest House hearing. Only two Democrats remained, Elijah Cummings of Maryland and Jackie Spire of California. You said nothing, and you did nothing while those 15 brain-dead morons showed the ultimate disrespect for the dead and the American people. We demand you remove them from the committee. We will make sure they are duly reprimanded at the polls. It is utterly unacceptable that any elected leader would behave the way these people did. For all the people watching this video, these are the people who need to be removed as soon as possible from their positions in Congress. Carolyn Maloney of New York Danny Davis of Illinois Eleanor Holmes Norton from the District of Columbia. Gerald E. Connolly of Virginia. Jim Cooper of Tennessee. John Tierney Massachusetts Mark Pokin also from Massachusetts Matt Cartwright of Pennsylvania Michelle Lugin Grisham of New Mexico Peter Welch of Vermont Stephen Lynch another from Massachusetts Stephen Horsford Nevada Tammy Duckworth of Illinois. This woman is a dismembered war vet, and of all the rest of them, her behavior toward the families of those SEAL team members should go down in history right beside Hanoi Jane and John Sing like a bird McCain. Shame! Tony Cardenas, California. William Lacey Clay of Missouri. Of course, the Obama administration has made it clear that it makes no difference why the attack took place, why there wasn't ample security, nor why the multiple requests for security were denied, why no help was sent once the attack started and why there was a massive political cover-up after the attack. In short, the Obama administration continues to cover up the truth behind the Benghazi attack, why no help was sent once our diplomats and CIA agents came under attack, and why the Obama administration has not fessed up about the allegations that the Benghazi mission was about supplying arms and training for Syrian rebels who are aligned with Al-Qaeda, Al-Nusra, and the Muslim Brotherhood. 
And now Obama's allies are flagrantly displaying infantile disrespect for the families of those who lost their lives on that fateful night on September 11, 2012. Remove them, America. If you can't get them recalled, get them in the next election. Send them packing. There is no excuse under the heavens for this kind of classless, appalling, and disgraceful behavior. Meanwhile, the puppet masters are not giving up on using this great nation to begin World War III. Naturally, select puppets are being used willingly to set up and promote a completely false narrative to convince the American people that somehow Russia is now a threat to our national security. Never mind that it was Russia that stopped this insanity from escalating in the first place. No nation, no people, and no government can ever hope to prevail unscathed from a nuclear war, which is, and make no mistake that it is, what is being put into place. Why? Those manipulating the plan think they will be safe in their massive underground bunkers, their ultimate goal of depopulating the earth by six and a half billion souls will be accomplished, and they will emerge after the aftermath with complete totalitarian control over what is left of humanity, and will rule the earth in perpetuity from their sick, one-world slave state, the UN New World Order. So, what exactly are they up to? Well, that has come out in an article written by Viktor Titov with New Eastern Outlook, Moscow. USA starts blackmailing Russia over Syria. Our shadow government exposes itself with Syrian flank moves on Russia. Editor's Note We have long editorialized here that it is not just the Obama administration pushing for chaos in the Mideast. Those who have always profited from regional chaos have a dog in this fight, and they are not about to give up. Viktor Titov does an excellent job here, dissecting the four senator clowns selected to put Russian sanctions on the table to start preparing the minds of the public, framing Russia as a threat that needs to be addressed, when in fact Putin is reacting to our obvious threats. It is also a pleasure to see someone writing in their second language using a term like losing their marbles. Well, here we go. Not only has it gotten to the point that there have been allegations of Moscow, they say, of being a Damascus accomplice in their use of chemical weapons against insurgents and civilians, but now it's gone as far as blackmailing Russia. Senate proxies are threatening the possibility of sanctions against the largest Russian banks, and this is predominantly done by the government, but what faction? Consequently, four American senators, two Democrats, and two Republicans appealed to the American government to impose sanctions against a few large Russian banks such as Gazprom Bank, VTB, and VEB. The reason for this, in the senator's opinion, is that the banks, they say, finance the activities of the Syrian government. The Russian bankers have stated clearly what the truth is. Quote, the senators are misleading the American public. Our bank does not hold any assets for the Syrian government. Unquote. VTB commented to the press, quote, No one from the states came to us for information, so we believe that this initiative is simply an attempt to further dramatize the situation and to disrupt the upcoming Syrian peace process, unquote. So, who are the Senate puppets with skin in the game for financial gain? Gene, deep in the pockets of the bankers, Shaheen, Democrat, New Hampshire. Kelly Ayotte, Republican, New Hampshire. Richard Gungrab Blumenthal, Democrat, Connecticut. and John Cornyn, Republican, Texas. That brings us to another article, which surfaced yesterday, 
from a Canadian publication. Keeping in mind the events of the past few weeks, such as the FEMA Region 3 alert, the exposed movement of nuclear warheads from Dias Air Force Base to the East Coast, Lindsey Graham's outlandish statement about a nuclear terrorist attack on Charleston Harbor, Janet Napolitano's hasty and flimsily explained exit from the DHS, and the massive stockpiling of weapons, ammunition, food, pharmaceuticals, and the latest mass order by DHS for medical scrubs, portable medical personnel shelters, and the hurried recruitment and training of internment camp personnel over the past year alone. Let those things occupy the forefront of your minds, America, while we read the article. Washington, D.C. Navy Yard shooting linked to attempted arrest of Obama for treason. Posted by Press Corps World News, Thursday, September 19, 2013. In politics, nothing happens by accident. If it happens, you can bet it was planned that way. Franklin Delano Roosevelt. U.S. military police were targeted and killed by Obama in the Washington, D.C. Navy Yard shooting. Why? Agents from the U.S. military's criminal investigation units had uncovered a plot to detonate a nuclear device in the heart of the nation's capital as part of an Obama government false flag. Officials from NCIS, United States Naval Criminal Investigative Service, and the U.S. Office of the Provost, both with field offices inside the Washington, D.C. Navy Yard, had threatened to arrest Obama for planning to attack Syria without congressional approval following a planned nuclear detonation false flag in Washington, D.C. The Office of the Provost is on the second floor of Building 34, 1 First Avenue, Charlestown Navy Yard, and NCIS is located at 716 Sickard Street, Southeast Suite 2000, Washington Navy Yard, D.C. The United States Naval Criminal Investigation Service, NCIS, is the primary law enforcement agency of the United States Department of the Navy. It investigates activities concerning crimes against or by United States Navy and United States Marine Corps personnel, along with national security, counterintelligence, and counterterrorism cases. The false flag is the crime of treason, levying war against the United States. If United States Navy or United States Marine Corps personnel are involved in planning for and preparing a false flag event, in Washington, D.C. or anywhere else in the United States, NCIS and its agents are duty-bound to investigate and take action to counter those terrorist acts against the United States. Prior to the Washington, D.C. Navy Yard shooting, the Joint Chief of Staff and Provost Marshals were planning and preparing to arrest Obama for treason, for levying war against the United States with a planned false flag in Washington, D.C. on the anniversary of 9-11, a nuclear detonation. In the United States, the Office of the Provost has the authority to arrest the President if he or she violates the terms of his or her employment or commits an act that is detrimental to the United States. He or she can be held liable, arrested, imprisoned, etc., depending on the depth of the violation by the Provost Marshal of the United States. If it has been determined that the President of the United States has committed treason in a manner unmistakable to all, the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff convenes a covert meeting, in this case at the Washington, D.C. Navy Yard, to get a vote of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. The Provost Marshal General of the Army and or Marines will usually be in attendance. Remember that a military officer takes an oath of office to do one thing, and one thing only, to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign or domestic. They must determine, above a reasonable doubt, that the domestic enemy is the treasonous president before they can attempt to arrest him or her. Once the Joint Chiefs of Staff have determined beyond a reasonable doubt that the President has committed treason, a convoy of 10 to 12 high-ranking officers, 13 killed at the Navy Yard, depart the Pentagon, accompanied by a large contingency of military police. 
provost marshals, and CIS agents, and all necessary armament and provisions to enter the grounds of the White House by force, if necessary, and proceed to the location of the president and put him under arrest. Then the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff would advise the Speaker of the House, the President of the Senate, the Attorney General, and the Secretary of State of their actions. Obama's response to the threat of arrest was a coordinated assault against NCIS agents who uncovered the false flag plot against the United States and against Provost Marshals who threatened to arrest Obama at the Washington, D.C. Navy Yard. Have you not wondered why all of the names and rank of those who were killed in the assault have not been released? The White House ordered their names and rank classified as it would raise alarm bells in Washington, D.C. should the public know Joint Chiefs of Staff members, Provost Marshals, and NCIS agents were targeted and killed for threatening to arrest Obama for treason. The White House is claiming that the names of those killed are being withheld pending next-of-kin notification. On September 28, 2009, the History Channel released a movie titled Day After Disaster. The entire movie is about Washington, D.C. being the target and victim of a nuclear detonation. The movie also features Obama talking about nuclear detonations in the U.S. In the movie, it's at 0 0.50 timestamp. Quote, One terrorist, one nuclear weapon could unleash massive destruction, Obama says. Unquote. Last year, Press Corps wrote an article titled, COG Planning for and Preparing Washington, D.C. Nuclear Detonation False Flag Event, after receiving information that September 30, 2012, was the day day after disaster was to be executed in real time. Obama's planned false flag attack for September 30, 2012 was averted after the public was made aware of the false flag beginning August 18, 2012. Obama's 9-11 anniversary false flag was thwarted when the Joint Chief of Staff and the Provost Marshals from the Washington, D.C. Navy Yard confronted Obama and threatened to arrest him for treason for planning to detonate one or more nukes in the nation's capital, Washington, D.C. The EU Times reported June 27, 2013, Obama requests 15,000 Russian troops for upcoming disaster. In that story, it claims Obama has requested at least 15,000 Russian troops trained in disaster relief and crowd functions, i.e. riot control, be prepositioned to respond to FEMA Region 3 during an unspecified upcoming disaster. The Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA Region 3, includes Delaware, Washington, D.C., formerly the District of Columbia, Maryland, Pennsylvania, Virginia, and West Virginia areas. According to this report, this unprecedented request was made directly to Minister Vladimir Pukov by U.S. Department of Homeland Security Director Janet Napolitano, now retired, who said these Russian troops would work directly and jointly with her Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, part of whose mission is to secure the continuity of the U.S. government in the event of natural disasters or war. This report has been verified. The origins of this report can be read on the website of Ministry of the Russian Federation for Affairs of Civil Defense Emergencies and Elimination of Consequences of Natural Disasters, or internationally as Emercom of Russia. The Russian Emergency Situations Ministry and the USA Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, are going to exchange experts during joint rescue operations in major disasters. This is provided by a protocol of the fourth meeting of the U.S.-Russia Bilateral Presidential Commission Working Group on Emergency Situations and 17th meeting of Joint U.S.-Russia Cooperation Committee on Emergency Situations, which took place in Washington on June 25th. In addition, the parties approved the U.S.-Russian cooperation in this field in 2013 to 2014, which envisages 
exchange of experience, including in monitoring and forecasting emergency situations, training of rescuers, development of mine rescuing, and provision of security at mass events. Former Department of Homeland Security Secretary Janet Napolitano, ABC News, August 27, 2013, quote, a massive and serious cyber attack on the U.S. homeland is coming, and a natural disaster the likes of which the nation has never seen is also likely on its way. Unquote. The only way anyone could know that there is a natural disaster the likes of which the nation has never seen is also likely on its way is if you are the one planning and preparing it. Quote, you also have to prepare for the increasing likelihood of more weather-related events of a more severe nature as a result of climate change and continue to build the capacity to respond to potential disasters in far-flung regions of the country occurring at the same time. You will need a large bottle of Advil, unquote, Napolitano joked. Napolitano is hinting at what the United States government, Obama, is planning and preparing for using its weather-modifying weather weapon of mass destruction called HARP. Don't think the U.S. government is planning to detonate a nuke in Washington, D.C.? They've already planned for it. DHS, Illegal Posse Comitatus Force, FEMA, Washington, D.C., Nuclear Detonation Scenario Report complete with nuclear detonation maps, charts, and fatality estimates. NCR stands for National Capital Region. Why else would Department of Homeland Security Secretary Janet Napolitano suddenly resign her post? She announced her resignation July 12, 2013 and leave Washington, D.C. for California because while she was DHS Secretary Janet Napolitano planned for and prepared for a major Washington, D.C. event. She got out of Dodge before the attack on the U.S. homeland is coming. Janet Napolitano's resignation as Department of Homeland Security Secretary was effective September 7, 2013, just four days before the planned 9-11 anniversary nuclear device detonation false flag. Just before leaving her post, Dias Air Force Base reportedly moved nuclear warheads to the east coast of the United States in a secret transfer that had no paper trail. The Dias Air Force commander allegedly authorized unknown parties to transfer nuclear warheads to an unknown location on the U.S. east coast, where the warheads would then be picked up and potentially utilized. Conspiracy? Legal definition for conspiracy, an agreement between two or more persons to engage jointly in an unlawful or criminal act, or an act that is innocent in itself but becomes unlawful when done by the combination of actors. A conspiracy is codified as a criminal offense. A conspiracy is not fiction, make-believe, or theory. A conspiracy is an indictable offense wherein two or more persons engage jointly in an unlawful or criminal act. The evidence reveals that Obama, the DHS, FEMA, and other agencies of the United States are actively conspiring to lever levy war against the United States through a false flag, an unlawful or criminal act. Did our military inform Obama of his imminent arrest? That is not in our ability to confirm or deny. However, if they didn't, we damn well want to know why not. The number of treasonous actions by this president and his administration are now too numerous to cover in a single video, article, or even within the span of a three-hour radio show. From an unauthorized attack on Libya to the fact that without congressional approval and behind the people's backs, he has already deployed our sons and daughters to Syria. Boots on the ground in another blatant abuse of power with no lawful authority whatsoever. What are the chances that the planned nuclear strike on D.C. 
was to be comprised of those elusive nuclear warheads salvaged by the Navy and CIA in 1968, which they lied about, have kept secret and hidden all these years, and could well explain just exactly how Dias Air Force Base even had any to be shipping to the East Coast to start with. How very convenient for Obama if a nuclear strike on D.C. had Russia's stamp on the weapon. Apparently, the government not only thinks we are stupid, but blind and deaf as well. We have known about the Russian troops training on our soil for a very long time, but now we're expected to believe that on one hand, Russia trains with the U.S. to supply protection for the criminals in the halls of governance when the people finally go after them, and vice versa, it's assumed. But at the same time, they are our enemy planning and plotting with Syria. Even as our imposter president defies the law of the land and sends massive amounts of weaponry and ammunition to the known and declared enemies of the United States and Syria, his administration and its mouthpiece Senate attempt to claim that Russia, the only country, by the way, to step up and use good old common sense in this crisis, is the one stirring up the trouble. So with four totally clueless and mentally defective senators to 15 morally bankrupt Democrats in Congress, we the people have a damn good place to start with removal efforts. For that, we thank you, Mr. Speaker. Just keep providing us with reasons and identities. We're happy to comply. As for Commandant Napolitano's statement about more weather-related disasters surely on the way, there is no surprise there either. The falsely labeled hurricane, which was actually an accidental supercell created by HARP, Hurricane Sandy, and planned several years before in her FEMA drill in Florida, the dipsticks even used the name Operation Hurricane Sandy, only served to prove those of us sounding the alarm for years to be right. There is an excellent video interview with Dr. Barry Trower, a retired deep cover agent from the early 60s, in which he gives detailed information on how MK Ultra came to be and is still in use to kill massive numbers of unsuspecting citizens around the world. From microwave frequencies now being implemented through smart meters and satellites to control the mind of otherwise normal, decent human beings to create violent behavior, mental illness and aggression, to the deliberate activation of deadly viruses and using entire populations without their consent as test subjects. This has been going on in direct opposition and violation of the Nuremberg Treaty since its creation. Every American must see this interview to understand what every member of the CFR, which includes most of Congress, except maybe the freshmen, have known is going on and are frantically hoping we don't find out until they can all get the hell out of Dodge. Well, Mr. Speaker, there's no amount of bullshit which can put the genie back in the bottle. There's no way we'll be chipped, and there's no amount of money we can be bribed with to induce us to look the other way. We are fully able to block the microwave frequencies, grow nutritional food, turn ordinary household items into self-defense weapons, communicate without your power grid, and defeat you by sheer numbers. We the people are still in possession of our souls and will act in the best interest of humanity because nobody owns us, even though they may think they do. Today, we the people are presenting you in Congress with two demands. First, not only do we demand that you release the list of victims at the Navy Yard, but just in case you're even tempted to come up with some false ones, we demand to hear by live, real-time interview from each and every one of the NCIS and Joint Chiefs who were indeed there. We won't give you the names of those we know were there. Instead, we'll see if you pass the test. Second, we demand 
that those Democrats who walked out on the families of our fallen in Benghazi during the House hearings be removed from that committee immediately and sanctioned severely. We will take care of removing them permanently from their seats of office. We the people are putting all of you on notice once again. We didn't buy the Navy Yard fiasco even as it was taking place. And if anything, and we mean anything else, happens for the purpose of advancing disarmament of America, any type of so-called terrorist attack or another drugged-out shooter should pop up, we are coming after the real culprits, and you all know who you are. The bankers own you, but contrary to what they think, they do not own us. We are the answer.